Hey everyone, it's Guilherme, and in this video we are going to get started with Godot's visual scripting tools, which is a part of Godot that got some improvements from version 3.0. And to do so, we are going to create a controller for a ship, and by the end of the video we are going to compare the visual script that we created with its equivalent in GDScript, and also some of the reasons to why you should use or should not use visual scripting in your games. This is going to be a code along tutorial, so if you'd like to follow along, you can go to our GitHub repository and find the visual scripting folder. Here you'll find two folders, one of them represents the end state of our game, and the other one is the one that you should import into Godot, which is the start. I already have said project imported in Godot, and this is what you're going to find once you import it. In this starting scene, we have a ship, which is the node that we're going to attach the visual script to, and we also have a map, which is composed by two tile maps. To start working on our ship, let's go to its scene, and here, with the ship selected, we're going to attach a new script to it. The only difference here is that we have to change the language from GDScript to Visual Script. Also notice how the extension of the file has changed from .gd to .vs, and now we can click on Create. This is going to open the script tab, and if we had different scripts, all of them would sit here on the same menu that they sit normally. And we can also interact between different types of script, for instance, Visual Script and also GDScript without a problem. Now, before we can start editing our script, we have to first create or select a function. And then our graph editor would appear in the middle of our screen. To do so, we can go to the members part of our menu. And here we have two options. We can either create a new custom function by using the plus icon. Or if we click on this square looking icon, we are going to overwrite a function. As we want to move a kinematic body to D, we should do so inside of our physics process function. So this means that we are going to have to overwrite a function, and thus we are going to click on the square icon. Here we can search for the physics process, and once we have found it, we can click on open. Now we can see our graph editor, and we can move around inside of it using the same keys that we would inside of our 2D view part. One aspect that you should pay attention when editing visual scripts is that these white boxes that you see inside of our graph editor, for instance, the function of our physics process, is considered a node. So whenever I refer to a node in this tutorial, I'm referring to nodes inside of our graph editor and not to scene nodes, for instance, our ship and our sprite and our collision 2D. This is really confusing and it also confused me at the beginning because here in the bottom we have available nodes and I thought that this was referring to scene nodes, but in fact it is referring to nodes that we can use inside of our graph editor. So if you search for something like multiply, we will be able to drag and drop nodes from inside of this menu to our graph editor. And once we release our mouse button, the node is going to be created. This is an operator node that is going to apply the multiplication operation to its inputs, in this case A and B, and is going to output. What you see in green here are the parts of our node, and everything that you have on the left are called inputs, and everything that you have on the right are called outputs. The difference that we have from our operator node and our function node is the fact that our physics process also has a sequence part which is this white arrow that you see right here. We are going to connect this to anything that we want to execute right after the physics process is called. And if I release my mouse now, we are going to be prompted with a menu that we can search for anything that we want to call after this function is called. In this case, we still don't want to do anything, so I'm just going to cancel. And another thing that is important to note is that whenever you have a node selected inside of our graph editor, we might have some options to tweak in our inspector. In the case of our operator node, we can change its operation from multiply to, for instance, add. This is not true to all nodes, but still it's important to note that you might have some options in the inspector. Now that we've got that out of the way, I'm going to delete the operator node by selecting it and hitting the delete key. Now we are going to start developing our script and what we want to do here is rotate our ship based on the player input and move it either forward or backwards based on its rotation. If we go to the project settings, you can see that we already have some inputs defined on our input map which are forward, backward, rotate left and also rotate right. Because we will have to rotate and move our ship, we are going to need some variables that are going to be exported that are going to define its speed to both rotation and also movement. We can create new variables by going to the members tab and clicking on the plus icon. This is going to create a new variable and to rename it we can double click on top of it. In this case I'm going to create the rotate speed. And to configure this variable we can either press ctrl E or click with the right mouse button on top of it and click on edit member. 
the type of the variable is going to be float the default value is going to be 50 and we are going to export it and then we can click on close and now we are going to create another variable which is going to be our move speed once again control e to configure it the type is going to be float the value is going to be 150 and we are also going to export as i said before we want to move based on the player input and to do so we will have to use the action node before creating it i'm just going to move the graph editor a little bit to the left and then i'm going to drag and drop the action node on top of it the logic here is going to be to determine if the player wants to rotate to the left or to the right then we are going to calculate how much we should rotate on that frame and we are going to add this value to our current rotation so to begin with with our action node selected we are going to change the action from backward to rotate right we are then going to convert this boolean value that we are getting as an output to an integer we can do so by searching for int going all the way to the bottom until we find the int that takes a boolean as a constructor and just drag it and drop it on top of our graph editor now we can drag the output from our action and put it on the input of our constructor we're going to do the same for the rotate left so we can just select everything and press ctrl d to duplicate them i'm already going to connect the outputs here move them so they are better aligned and instead of checking for the rotate right we're going to check for rotate left now we have to subtract rotate left from rotate right so we can search for the subtract operator place it here a we're going to get the value from rotate right and b from rotate left i'm once again going to move the nodes a little bit so it's more readable and now we are going to multiply this value that we just calculated which is going to be minus one zero or one by our rotation speed to do so we can come to the members tab and just drag and drop our rotation speed on top of our graph editor once again we have to use an operator we can use the same one that we have here and just ctrl d to duplicate it and change the operator from subtraction to multiplication now we'll take the output from here and multiply by our rotation speed we will have to multiply this value by our delta this way our game is going to run in the same speed independent of the frame speed so once again we can duplicate our operator and as inputs we're going to use this calculated value and multiply it by our delta and finally what we have to do is add this calculated value to our rotation degrees to do so we'll first have to get our rotation degrees and we can do so by selecting our ship and from our inspector we can drag and drop the rotation degrees in our graph editor you notice that if we just do that we're going to get a setter but in this case we first want a getter and to get this getter we we'll have to do the same thing but keep control pressed and now if we release our mouse button we're going to get a getter we can keep the setter inside of our graph editor because we're going to need it i'm just going to put it a little bit to the side and get our rotation degrees to here now i'm once again going to duplicate our operator and change the operation from multiply to add and we're going to add our current rotation degrees to the one that we just calculated and now that we have this value what we can do is set our rotation degrees by connecting its output to the input of our set rotation degrees function as you can see this node does have a sequence part so we are first going to connect the output from our physics process to the input of our set rotation degrees and this is going to make sure that we are going to call this function with the value that we just calculated as soon as we enter the physics process we can now save our script and if we play the game we are already going to start rotating our ship and here we can see the footage of our game being played and as you can see it is correctly responding to the inputs and rotating the ship accordingly now that our rotation is working we have to do pretty much the same thing but with our movement so we can come to the left and pretty much select everything that we have on the top here copy it with ctrl c and paste it inside of our graph editor now we're going to move it a little bit to the bottom and start to change the parameters in our inspector first the action that we are going to check in this first node isn't going to be rotate right but it's going to be the backward on the bottom we're going to check for forward and on the get rotate speed we're going to change it from rotate speed 
to move speed. The last multiplication is still correct. And we can go to the right once again and start to calculate our velocity. To move our ship, we are going to use the move and collide function. And to get access to it, we'll first have to get a reference to ourselves. So we can go to the available nodes and search for self. Drag and drop it inside of our graph editor. And from here, we can just select our kinematic body 2D, drag it and drop on into nowhere. And here we can search for move and collide. We have the function here and we can click on open. As you can see, we also have a sequence part, so we can already select our set rotation degrees and drag it on top of our move and collide because we want to move our ship after it's being rotated. And the move and collide function expects as an input a vector 2. So we'll first have to create that vector 2. So let's go a little bit to the left once again until we find the velocity that we just calculated. In the available nodes, we can now search for vector 2. And we want to create a vector 2 based on two inputs. So we can select the last constructor and drop it inside of our graph editor. Now, because we are rotating our ship, this value that we just calculated is going to be used as an input of our y parameter of our vector 2. And as for the x, we can just leave it at 0. Once again, as we did with our rotation degrees, we also have to multiply the value that we just calculated here by our delta because we want to keep a constant velocity which is independent of our frame speed. So we can just select this operator that we have here and duplicate this node, bring it a little bit to the front, and we're going to multiply the vector two by our delta from our physics process. With that in place, we're now going to calculate this vector as a rotated vector based on our current rotation. To do so, we can search for rotated inside of our available nodes. And we want to get the one that expects a vector 2. So scroll a little bit down until you find vector 2. And once again, just create the new node inside of our graph editor. We expect two parameters here. One is our vector 2 that we just calculated. And the second one is our rotation, which should not be in degrees. So we we'll have to modify our rotation degrees from degrees to radians. To do so, let's search for dag to red. And once again, create a node. Because we already have the getter for our rotation degrees, we can just drag the output from it inside of our dag to red. And now the output from this node to our rotated. With this, we now have the correct vector and we can just drag the output into our move and collide. And our script is ready. Now it's time to save it and test our game once again. And now, as you can see, whenever we try to go forward, our ship is going to go based on its rotation and also backward. Congratulations, you just created your first visual script in Godot 3.1. Now, before jumping into our conclusion, I just wanted to show the equivalent from the visual script that we just created in GDScript. You can find this example in our end project and you're going to find it inside of our ship folder and the file is named ship normal. Now, this is a GDScript file and if you look closely, what we have here is only 11 lines of code that represent all of that visual script that we just created. Now, this took me way less time to create than it took me to create the visual script. In part, that was, of course, because I'm not that experienced using the visual scripting tool. But still, it's not a really complex script and it's also really small. So if you are looking for productivity, you really shouldn't be looking into visual script. And if you don't know how to code, you really should start learning it because all of the concepts that we used on our visual script, we are now applying inside of our GD script. With that said, Visual Script does have its space in Godot's ecosystem, though it's mostly aimed at designers who don't really have coding experience, and it's also a really great tool to teach people who are a little bit afraid to code to get started with game development. Now, one thing to keep in mind if you are planning on using Visual Script in production is that the files that are generated, the .vs ones, are binary. This means that you won't be able to look at them in GitHub, for instance, and thus you won't be able to give review into the code directly into the repository. To do so, you first have to open the project inside of Godot, and then you have to look at the visual script, and then you have to find a way to give the feedback to the people at the correct place. As I said before, this project is available on our GitHub, so feel free to play around with it if you didn't follow along. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.